Good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Doc Holliday. Today we're looking at something very cool, especially for field recordists and sound designers. The JRF C-Series Pro Contact Mics. These guys right here. As always, check your screen for the real-time information for the gear I'm using and when I'm using it. I'm uh, not affiliated with JRF in any way. I bought these contact mics myself directly from Jez. Who's Jez? Well, he's the fascinating guy that designed and builds these Amazeballs mics. Jez Riley French. He's a world-famous field recordist and experimental sound explorer from the UK. He's been featured on the BBC and other networks, and his handmade mics have been used to capture key audio elements in games, radio, TV programs, and films such as The Green Planet, The Blue Planet, The Imitation Game, The Theory of Everything, Gravity, even Star Wars films and shows, and thousands of others. JRF. I got two of them here. If you don't know about contact mics, a crash course. Regular mics pick up sound waves in the air through electromagnetic current transfer from their capsules. There are a few types of capsules like condensers or dynamics or ribbons, etc. Though these mics all differ, the concept is the same. Contact mics operate differently. They pick up sounds as they're conducted through solid objects as opposed to air. Vibrations. They don't hear, they feel. Contact mics don't hear the sound of your voice projected through the air, but if you attached one to an object, let's say like a, like a wine glass or something like that, and then sang, it would pick up the sound vibrations that the glass is picking up. Sir David Attenborough used JRF C-Series Pro mics in his BBC documentary, What's in the Trunk, where he listened to the sound of a tree from the inside. I'll uh, drop a link to that video in the description below. There are many types of contact mics available on the market for varying costs, but I went super boutique here when I uh, chose the JRF mics. I went to one of the foremost contact mic recordists in the entire world and bought his very own design directly from him. These are 100% handmade from the highest quality parts, including specially designed cables that are free from any negative environmental impacts and Nutric connectors. But don't worry, you'll be able to purchase them too. The C-Series Pro mics are widely regarded as the best contact mics in the world. I bought two for a stereo pair. Let's have a look at them. It's a very simple design, a special handmade piezo mic dipped in a specialized acoustic transfer coating. The white foam dot is there to protect the mic when it's pressed onto a surface. The cable terminates in a Nutric quarter inch connector, but it requires a special impedance matching adapter to get the full frequency sound out of this mic. The impedance adapter also minimizes potential radio interference. To use the mic, you just press the contact part of the mic, this part right here, onto the surface of the thing you want to record. For stereo pairs like mine, I would fix both mics onto the surfaces or the surface I'm recording, attach the impedance matching adapters, and then plug them into the left and right channels of the recorder and hit record. It's important to note that you need to have it fixed on its own and not held in place by your fingers because the slightest movement will create a big noise. It's also important to note that if you use blue tack or sticky tack to stick the mic on something, uh, which is not recommended, but if you need to use it, then place a piece of electrical tape on the mic first. Otherwise, it can potentially eat away at the coating on the mic. I've used a version of the blue tack for tricky placements at times, and I observed this rule. Throw on the tape, then put the sticky tack on it, stick it on something if necessary. Though I do prefer to use either a clamp or tape when possible to attach the mic just so I avoid all of that. I do have a bunch of sticky tack in my audio bag just in case I need it. It measures, oh, hold on a sec. Let me just get my trusty old measuring tape here. You know, this measuring tape was manufactured in 1977. I, uh, I picked it up uh, on a planet called Alderaan, but that was a long time ago in a 
galaxy far, far away. The cable length is 6.6 .6 feet long, and the mic itself is 1.5 inches in diameter. Let's see it, rather hear it, in action. I've uh, plugged both XLR connectors into my mix pre here, as you can see right there. If the camera's not going to focus, so if it's out of focus, real sorry about that. We don't want to use phantom power turned on here at all. It works without the phantom power. So what I've done up here is I've connected the quarter inch Nutric cables into these impedance adapters right here and plugged them both into uh, one and two on my mix pre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this clamp here and clamp these two little guys left and right. Let's see if you can see. Make a noise there. Yeah. So I'm going to clip these two little guys on either side of this pocket watch that I literally found at the dollar store. It's got an incredibly weak tick. You can barely hear it. You can barely hear it. Here, you guys can listen at the same time as me. Probably can't hear anything. It's so weak. So it's a bad choice. It's the only thing that I had. Oddly enough, everything I have is either Google Home or you know, digital in some way. I, I was looking for something analog and uh, this had to do dollar store pocket watch, but it does do this. So look, oh, there we go. That's pretty good. I like that a lot. Anyway, so I'm going to stick one on each side and I'm going to put the clamp down on it just like that. It's barely picking it up. I really should have found one with a stronger tick. But anyway, uh, I'm going to have to max out the preamps here. And also, I'm going to have to boost it in post, which will bring probably a lot of uh, unwanted noise. Actually, I know it will. But anyway, here is the raw sound. really noisy because I just just boosted the crap out of it just to get that it's so faint so I took the liberty of testing this before I recorded this video and and used some plugins in my DAW to or DA whatever to craft some cool sounds from this dollar store watch I recorded at 24 bit and 192 kilohertz just in case I wanted to slow it down or you know So this is the sound of the tick Without changing the pitch or timing. I used a little rx8 voice to noise uh, fab filter pro q3 eq and shaped it uh, And then I used a limiter. I think I had a compressor on there uh, You can hear the fan on my furnace pushing out the air conditioning uh, rumbling as I vibrated the watch housing as I did this. You could, it just amps it really, really high because I had to boost it, right? Um, I didn't use a gate, so here's that process sound with all those plugins. Now listen to this. I pitched it down just a little bit using Sound Toys Little Alter Boy. Also, I used FabFilter Pro Q3 for EQ, and I shaped it a bit. I used uh, Waves Low Air, uh, Waves Clarity VX, Denoiser, and Kilohertz Gate. And here's the sound of that all together right now. And here I did all of that together without the gate and added reverb. I didn't add the gate this time because I thought the furnace noise droning in the background there added to its suspense. So here's this sound. This is exactly what I did here just earlier, right? And I just clamped them down, two of them on either side of this dollar store watch, and this is the cool stuff I got out of it. You can imagine what you can do with anything. You can stick it on a furnace or a garage door opener as you're doing it in the rumbles. You could put it on a wine glass and sing and, uh, you know, 
make it vibrate with your voice and it'll sound really strange. You can do all kinds of really cool sound design, which I think sound design is the coolest. I think it's so cool how you can shape sounds and make them sound like everything else. If you want to know how I do all this sound design, I can do another video showing all that, but that's not the purpose of this video. But if you want to know, let me know in the comments if you want me to show you how you can do your own sound design with these contact mics or with, with really anything. Um, and I'll show you the plugins I use and the process I take. Just let me know if you want to see that and I will show you. I think we need more examples. I think maybe a field recording trip is in order. So here I am on the train bridge, and uh, there could be a train coming anytime, but I climbed on top of here so I can get sound of this old structure. So, one, two. I'd like to go in the middle, but I'd also prefer not to die. So, here's what we're doing. Let's hear the sound of this old bridge and a little slight breeze. What does that sound like? All right, I think it's time to go home. Right on. Here are the pros and cons. The pros are they're well-made and durable. They sound fabulous. They're small and will easily fit into your sound bag, any sound bag. They're environmentally friendly. And to buy them, you're supporting a person directly. The cons are, there are no cons that I can find, really. I mean, I guess if you were nitpicky and you looked at these, you know, they look handmade. I mean, they look handmade, I guess. I don't know if that's a con. I kind of like that, though. You know what I mean? Like, I like that homegrown thing. I like that, a, that a somebody crafted this. So that's not even a con. That's another pro. So once again... There's no cons. That's what I have to say. That's, that's my verdict. Here's how you can get your very own JRF C-Series Pro contact mics. I'm going to give you the price of the exact ones I bought here with the same specifications. With the Neutrik or Neutrik, however you say it, quarter inch connectors, each contact mic is 45 pounds or 52 American dollars. For $6 less, you can opt for Rheen connectors, which are still good, but not top of the line like Neutrik, 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 Neutrik. The impedance matching adapters are 25 pounds or $38 USD each. It's important to order the impedance adapters from JRF since they are specific. The mics don't come with the adapters, so make sure you add those to your order. So... The total cost for one JRF C-Series Pro contact mic with all the parts needed for high quality recording is 70 British pounds or 107 US dollars each. So $214 US gets you a stereo pair. Uh, I think the, the price is fantastic uh, compared to a lot on the market and you're getting some really good quality stuff here. You can also request a uh, specific length of cable as well. You can increase the length of the cable for $5 per 3.3 additional feet. That's one meter increments. 
to purchase these mics, you have to go to www.jezreillyfrench.co.uk. There are other super wicked awesome mics that are available that uh, Jez makes, like um, like hydrophones or uh, geophones, even electromagnetic microphones that he makes there. I hope to review those as well in the future. That's going to be really, really cool. Do I recommend the JRF C-Series Pro contact mics? Yes, very much. But it's a niche thing, you know what I mean? If you're not into sound design or field recording or sound exploring, then there's no reason for you to purchase these mics. They're very specific. But if you're into these things, then these are a fantastic addition to your kit. I couldn't recommend these more. If I didn't already own them, I'd buy them. You're a daisy if you do. Bye now. End transmission. And watch those other videos again. I got I gotta say that because you know for these things. Look at these videos. These are these are pretty good. These look good. So click on one of them and like them. And uh, like and subscribe if you can. You know what I mean? That would be really great. See you later, guys.